season 10 is just over two weeks away. What can we expect from this hero season? Let's have a look. As I said in the intro, season 10 is a hero season, meaning that a new hero will be added to the roster. This time around, it's a DPS hero. Venture, the burrowing archaeologist. There actually is a test weekend for Venture going on right now. Well, depending on when you watch this video. It is running till Sunday. In case you missed the test, I made a video where I go over all the abilities, some of the questions people had about these abilities, and some gameplay. And I also made a lore video tying Venture into an existing map and an existing faction within overwatch i'll leave both links below one thing that is changing in season 10 with the hero releases is that new heroes from now on will be available for everybody for free on day one huzzah now usually when we have a season where they add a new hero, we don't get a lot of other content. But ever since season 6, the official release of Overwatch 2, that seems to have changed. It looks like they're ramping up the content that they're pushing out every single season. And some of that season 10 content might be very uh, impactful for the future of Overwatch. But more about that later in this video. First, let's focus on the most obvious question. What is the theme going to be for this season? Well, back at BlizzCon in November, they teased four possible themes for future seasons that would be coming somewhere in 2024. There was Eldritch Horror, Witches and Wizard, Mirror Universe, and Egyptian Mythology. Season 9, the current season was the Eldritch Horror theme. And I'm actually working on a series of videos that kind of explains all of the other themes. And the first one is going to be about Egyptian Mythology. I'll be pushing that out any day now. So make sure to subscribe. And the other themes will follow after that. For season 10, I have two possible scenarios for different themes this season could be. Bear with me. On one hand, I do think it would make a lot of sense if Blizzard was to tie in the season in which they released the archaeologist hero into Egyptian mythology. Kind of obvious. Especially since we saw two Anubis teasers in the Venture trailer. One was the Anubis statue that they were holding. And second was the Easter egg right at the end of the video. That shows Venture entering the chamber that holds Anubis, the god program. The instigator of the Omni Crisis. That was actually quite a huge lore moment. So I would say that at this point the Egyptian theme is almost confirmed, right? Well, look, there's also some proof to the contrary. See, if it's not the Egyptian theme, that leaves us with witches and wizards and the mirror universe. And personally, I'm more keen on seeing the mirror universe than anything else at this point. You know, where the heroes become villains and the villains become heroes. That is always an interesting job. Now, when they released the season 9 trailer a few weeks ago, so that is the trailer for the current season, I was actually pretty convinced that season 10 was going to be the mirror universe season because of one Anna skin that was in that trailer. It was hidden in there pretty well. But it gave me these talent vibes. But then it turned out that it was just a shop skin that was available in season 9. It was called Sanguine Curse. Sanguine in the sense of, well, blood red and curse, well, yeah. I don't think I need to explain that. But that fits in with the Eldritch Horror team. But I am convinced that this skin was actually meant to be released with the Mirror Universe team. Because both the colors and that mask that Anna is wearing feels very talent like. But more importantly, look at that little apron in front of her skin. She has it on all her more basic skins. In this case, it has this Eldritch face on it. You know what? The talent emblem would have fit perfectly on there. It would have made it into a talent skin. And actually, if you look a little closer, that Eldritch face looks identical to the talent logo. Coincidence? I don't think so. Case closed. I'm out of order. You're out of order. Yeah, sorry. I got a little carried away there. Now, why would they adjust a Mirror Universe skin to fit into the Eldritch Horror? Good question. Why do you ask me stuff like that? No, seriously. Well, there are a few things. They could be short one skin for the Eldritch Horror team to add to the shop. And they might actually have a way better concept for Anna to use in the Mirror Universe team. I hope. So does that mean that Season 10 is going to be the Mirror Universe season? Yeah, not really. Not based on this information. But then, there's something else. The Mythic skin. After Season 9, we've seen three Mythic tank skins, three Mythic support skins, and three Mythic DPS skins. So when it comes to spreading them all out among the roles, we are kind of squared out. Now, if I had to take a guess, I would say that there's a 70% chance that the next Mythic skin is going to be for a DPS hero. On the account that they have been waiting the longest for a Mythic skin and that there are more DPS heroes. Now, which hero? Well, definitely not Genji, Tracer, or Hanzo, because they already got the skin and no, they're not going to give any hero a second skin before they did the whole round. I would instigate riots. Come on. 
What does stand out for me, however, is that all of the DPS Mythic skins have been for OG heroes. So heroes that were in Overwatch 1, even on release of Overwatch 1. So super OG. Or both tank and support do have an Overwatch 2 hero with a Mythic skin. So uh, my guess would be that maybe we're going to see an Overwatch 2 DPS hero getting that skin. Now that only leaves us with Soja. Because she is the only new DPS hero that we got since Overwatch 2 released. Well, until Venture releases in Season 10. And you know what? In a way, Sojin would be perfect for that Mirror Universe season. Having the new leader for Overwatch turning to talent? That would be... Come on! On the other hand, the hints towards the Egyptian team are overwhelming. Uh, to be honest, it would be extremely weird if it wasn't the Egyptian mythology team in Season 10. So I'm guessing that the Mirror Universe is going to be either Season 11 or Season 12. But who is getting that Mythic skin then? Well, Sojourn? Nah. Let's just keep Sojourn for the Mirror Universe. That would be perfect. Another DPS, maybe? Yeah, could make sense. I think Fire would be a popular choice. Although, I don't know. That's kind of obvious. What if they make Venture the first ever release here to get a Mythic skin? in the same season. But what about the tank? See, the fact that they teased Anubis, the god program, at the end of this trailer, it must mean something. Especially after they scrapped PvE, the fact that they kept it in there must mean something. Either for an event with an in-game mode, something I'll come back to in a minute, or they plan to play it really close to the lore. And in that case, Ramatra could be getting the next Mythic skin. Ramatra was actually created by Anubis. And in my opinion, he still is under the control of Anubis. And I'll talk more about that in a future video. We'll see. In any case, while we are on the topic of the Mythic skins, starting with Season 10, the Mythic skin is no longer going to be the final reward for the Premium Battle Pass. Instead, the skin is going to be added to the Mythic Shop, and you'll be earning a new currency throughout the Battle Pass called Mythic Prisms that will allow you to unlock that skin and all of its customizations. The fun thing is that in that shop, they also added all of the Mythic skins from the previous seasons up till and including Season 7. And in case you're not interested in that new skin, Ramatra Sojin, Farah, whatever it's going to be, you can choose to unlock one of the older ones in case you don't have it yet. And I think that is a huge, huge W. On that same battle pass, you'll also be unlocking premium currency. So that is the gold currency that you can use in the shop. 600 in total per season. That's another W. And I do hope we'll see more changes to the shop and the battle pass. Although I think that might be something for later seasons. I'll keep you guys posted. And when it comes to the actual gameplay, which is the most important thing, of course, there will be balancing. That is very obvious. With the start of season 9, they added this huge PvP reshuffle where they gave all heroes bigger projectiles, more HP, and they kind of messed about with the passives. Which caused a bit of an uproar when they announced that but that seems to have settled now that people got to try it and everybody's back to complaining about matchmaking and genji needing to be nerfed especially since they tackled some of the bigger issues with that reshuffle in the mid-season patch and then a little follow-up patch they did a week later but i do think not all of the issues have been dealt with and that should be happening in this update wrecking ball can expect a little more than just a few updates since he's getting a bit of a rework now what that rework is going to look like is currently unclear but i do think most players will agree that it is necessary in season 10 we can also expect to see some timing changes that were inspired by the quick play hack that they did back in season 8 quicker play remember that Aha. we're going to get a speed boost during the setup phase for defenders on both hybrid and payload maps the push bot on the push maps is going to be faster and those matches those push matches are going to be a bit shorter now a few weeks ago they did another quick play hack called double trouble but i don't think any of that is going to stick i do expect them to do another quick play hack somewhere in season 10 i really hope so i like those competitive was also reworked at the start of season 9 and in season 10 there's going to be further tweaking for instance aaron confirmed that starting with season 10 we will be able to use that new competitive currency to buy golden weapons which was not possible in season 9 which is good because i don't like the jade weapons nothing personal i'm just not a big fan of green Season 10 is also going to be the time where they remove the grouping restrictions in competitive play. In other words, you'll be able to group up with your bronze and diamond friends. Now, I'm not sure that this is already going to happen at launch of Season 10. That might be somewhere further along. We'll see. When it comes to events, Season 10 is a bit of a mystery. No pun intended. Look, around this time of the year, usually back in the day, we got the archives and the anniversary event. But that is not happening for obvious reasons. 
I do think we're going to get some type of event that is tied into the theme of this season, like they did in season 2 with Battle for Olympus, for instance, or the Diablo event, the Battle of the Beasts, and, well, in this current season, there was the Cosmic Crisis. I like it that they do that pretty often now. In the first seasons, it was kind of uh, occasional. But in the last seasons, that has happened every single time. So, I think that's a given. And that mode might actually be set in that space that Venture discovered, where Anubis is uh, hanging around. Uh, these puns are getting uh, a little out of hand. Sorry. What we do know, however, for a fact, is that the season is going to start out with a Clash test event. Clash is the new game mode that they're going to add in a later season. We will be able to test that new game mode for a short time at the start of the season. And we'll be playing that mode on the Hanawaka map, which is a reimagined Hanamura. And yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to going back to Hanamura, especially around this time of the year. Spring! The cherry blossoms will fall down and turn into a dark, mushy, goo substance that make you slip and hit your head. I love spring. I do think that testing these game modes on a bigger audience before you actually release them is a very good idea. I think Flashpoint would definitely have benefited from that. The Clash mode is coming to Overwatch for real somewhere in a future season. Maybe season 11, season 12, we'll see. And season 10 is coming on April 16th. However, for now, that was it. A huge thank you to my patrons. I could not make these videos without you guys. You have my eternal gratitude. Check out this video where I answer some of your questions you might have about Venture's abilities. Make sure to click it. But above all, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.